Good morning, everyone. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to attend our Techspert series webinar featuring GE Current. I'm Marie Young, Manager of Marketing and Communications, and this is Abby, uh, Marketing Project Manager at Crescent Electric. Our Techspert marketing campaign is designed to highlight the top-notch service and expertise that our Technical Support Center offers through a series of training webinars, tech tip videos, and blog articles and social media content. So today we're going to be hearing from Damian Rao and Dwayne Robinson from GE Current. Welcome. Thank you. Today, the team will be discussing the Daintree WHS-20 high bay sensor. And just want to let you guys know that this session is recorded and we'll be able to send that out later for your reference. If you have any questions throughout the duration of this presentation, just type them into the chat on the toolbar below and make sure that um, we, and we will make sure that your questions get answered. And in the meantime, you will be muted um, throughout the presentation. So I'm gonna turn it on over to Damien and Dwayne. Thanks, Marie. Let me get my screen going here. Give it a second here. All right. Can everybody see my screen? Sure can. All right. Well, thanks everyone for calling in. I appreciate your time. Understand how busy everybody is, um, even in the days of COVID here, being remote and all of the web conferences you do. My goal is not to put you to sleep, but to show you something exciting as we uh, explore controls in a high bay fixture with um, GE Current and Daintree companies, lighting and controls. So, Quickly, we're going to cover the controls platform as a whole. We're going to talk about the high bay fixture. We'll touch on the competition a little bit, what it takes to get the fixture up and running and the simplicity of it. We'll take a look at some of the upgrade paths within the controls portfolio and some of the tools associated. Before I do that, I just got a quick slide here. If you're not familiar with our company, we're a lot more than just a lighting company in the high bay space like we're talking about. We have fixtures for all different portions of commercial and industrial space. We have a con full controls portfolio for all of those associated fixtures and lamps. We're, we have an energy management system that is specifically tailored to the codes that are out there and the application needs. And we also have some brand new lights for the disinfectant space with UVC and UVA for killing bacteria and viruses. We're not gonna go into that today, but I just thought I'd make you aware in case you were unfamiliar with our company. So looking at a controls portfolio, there are several things that we've taken into account when I'm putting this together to make it as focused as possible and as simplistic as possible. And the first one is utilizing the, the infrastructure that exists in every building, whether it's retrofit or it's a new install, which is the lighting. Every building is gonna require that. So this control system leverages that infrastructure that will exist in every single building. It also has the sensors integrated into the fixtures. As you can see on the right, hopefully, can you see my cursor moving around, Maria? Marie? Yes, we can. Okay, thanks. So on the right here, this is a, a quick example of why integrating sensors into a fixture is a great idea. There's a lot of labor involved if it is separated and running low voltage wire between the positions of the sensors, having those sensors powered, having the fixtures powered, et cetera, versus having it all in the fixture from the get-go, applying power and being ready to go with a secure wireless platform. So we see that as a strength to our products and we are continuing to grow our fixture portfolio in that direction. Um, it's also something that's built from the get-go on open standards. I'll touch on that a little bit in the next slide. From the software side and the hardware side, you may have experienced with our other competitive products out there that you invest in one particular wireless uh, setup. And then they will tell you that if you don't have this new and great one that you can't upgrade from the previous one or that the software is incompatible and they're all little islands. We try to make it as open as possible. So our wireless is an open standard, not designed by us, but is a super robust, well-known standard. And also 
on the software side equally as open and flexible. The again, scalable. So if you get into one of our portfolios, I'll show you this and how you can scale all the way from a single fixture out to multiple sites, something that's easily specifiable because of the simplicity. And then something that's focused on the future, IoT or the Internet of Things or APIs, app application programming interfaces, the software that lets you leverage all the great data that's from the system. So before we get into the hardware, which I'm going to show you real quick here on the next slide after, um, after the next couple of slides here. Why do we focus on controls? Well, the codes are more and more focused on that across the country, um, especially when you look at IECC 2015, you can see the adoption and the, the color coding of the map on the top right. There's a lot of mandating within these codes to have rules set if it's a certain space or a certain amount of time of um, occupancy going away in a space that you want to have the illumination controlled either to a low level or to off to get an energy beyond just that initial uh, savings from going from a traditional lamp over to an LED lamp. So you're going to see more and more of this and controls will become more and more important. On the open infrastructure of these controls, we built the wireless portion off of Zigbee, very secure, been around for over 25 years. It's not something proprietary to the lighting market. It's used in many different markets, and it gives us the flexibility of even integrating third-party equipment that conform to the Zigbee standard. So the flexibility is there on the wireless side right from the get-go. It's also built to be a mesh network. If you haven't heard of that, the advantage of mesh is there is no single point hub that you need to communicate with to make everything work. The sensors or nodes within the ceiling, they can all communicate to each other. And the advantage of that is it gives you a lot longer range. So you don't have to have a hub um, in every particular area to get the communication. You could take a fixture out and the network will continue to communicate with itself and find another path through the other sensors. So a lot of re redundancy for um, secure and robustness and ease of use. So looking at our wireless portfolio and we're focusing today on the high base sensor, there are three different tiers and this applies um, in the commercial space and also the industrial space, but there are three wireless tiers that we have within our family. We have Daintree One, which is a single fixture, single sensor, the fixture can operate on its own and do its own thing. Easy Connect, we call it distributed or a, a smaller mesh network. You can define zones and bundle fixtures together so that they function cohesively together as a zone. And then Daintree Networked, which is also distributed, but has a, a extra component of bringing in more than just the lighting savings, but connecting into the entire energy infrastructure of the building and connecting it to the cloud so that you can pull metrics out of that excellent data that you have within the system. This whole thing is an upgradable path. That's why you see these arrows here. So if you have certain areas that start out as standalone and get redesigned and uh, it's a larger room, you can take those fixtures, upgrade them over the air through software without dip switches or uh, flipping things on the ceiling and turn it into a distributed meshed area that will operate together. Where is this used? What the focus today as far as uh, high bay fixtures, where would we use these things? Um, these are some examples where you can, you should go out and integrate these fixtures, warehouses, parking garages, grocery stores, essentially anywhere with a very high, tall ceiling up to 40 feet. Uh, these fixtures are designed to be, uh, to illuminate and control those areas. So there's a couple components to this new sensor. Um, the sensor itself, which goes on the fixture and also the remote. Uh, the sensor is designed to be as versatile as possible, very technology packed. Um, has Zigbee and Bluetooth and infrared, all kinds of things that I'll, behind the scenes take care of the communication portion to allow it to easily be integrated into an area in the building. Um, very ideal for the warehouses, like I mentioned, it's very cost effective from the labor savings perspective and also from an ambient light detection capability, which I'll explain later. It has a full range of dimming or we got, so we call it continuous dimming. It isn't predefined. You can set those dimming levels to whatever you want, easy to spec and also complies with the energy codes. So here's a look at the actual hardware and what you would get out of the box. You might see the sensor mounted in the middle on the bottom of the fixture. This would go in obviously in the high bay or on the side. The two differences between these is really the voltage. So in the middle would be your traditional 120. And then as you increase in, increase in voltage, 
the sensors put on the side due to the size of the equipment growth within the fixture. So both of these perform the same function. The sensor itself is uh, Bluetooth for um, the easy connect tier of our controls, but it also has bi-directional infrared. And this remote that we have allows you to push and pull programming into the sensor to make it perform the settings that you want to um, tailored to the instance. The fixture itself is available up to 90,000 lumens. The one you're looking at here is about 24,000 lumens. It's extremely light at only 11 pounds. Maybe some of the ones you've seen out there are very cumbersome to hold and install. We tried to make it as light as possible. Heat is also a very important aspect, especially in talking about high bay. If you think about how high it is on the ceiling, heat builds up there. So not only do you have the heat from the fixture itself, but you have the cumulative heat from the environment um, around that fixture. So as you look at some of the other products out there, that's one thing to keep in mind. And then 200 lumens per watt, if you're looking at the efficiency, DLC listed, um, and a lot of lens options. So you can tailor the light to an aisle or a wider space, depending on the application. This is a quick look at the catalog. So you might say, well, this new sensor is great, but I go look at the catalog, where do I find this? In the controls column here, we have a couple of them. So you'll hear me talk about Easy Connect and Daintree One and Networked. Here's Daintree Networked. You have the N options, Daintree One, the F options. Easy Connect is coming uh, into this month and it will be integrated as its own section in here as well. So that's how you can find it. There's one more fixture that has this sensor integrated right now and there's more coming. This is an NSF rated fixture for food environments where you have to have splash resistance and IP66 rating. Um, easily will run off any fluid that um, falls onto the fixture when the area is cleaned. Very easy to install. And again, for this type of fixture, extremely light at only 16 pounds. So easy to put into the, its location. On this sensor, another thing we paid attention to is the changing out the lenses for the sensor itself. Obviously you're mounted at different uh, levels of height within the application. And you wanna be able to easily change out those lenses. So as it gets closer to the floor, that cone that casts onto the floor will change based on its mounting height. So we have one for eight feet, one for 20 feet, one for 33 feet. And we have all of the distances outlined in our catalog for you. So it's easy to understand. Beyond that, there's a couple masks that you can put on. So if you want to really get it focused, you can put, uh, as I call it, horse blinders on it, clip it on very easily. There's not a lot of stuff that you have to take apart to put this in. It's really clip it out, put the right lens in, clip it back together, and you're done. Competitively, the thing that um, the things that set us apart with this is the scalability, being able to upgrade that same hardware within the controls portfolio the ability to uh, push and pull information with bi-directional infrared from the remote into the sensor. And I'll explain why that's important. And then the ability to set your illumination um, completely over a zero to 10 command signal at any level of illumination you desire. So now I'm gonna go into a few slides about the remote. Um, and I wanna show you how easy the remote really is. The remote is essentially a programming commissioning tool that you would push all of these settings um, to that sensor with, and the sensor would continue to operate with those settings as long as um, it's programmed. And then you could use a remote to change that down the road if you want. So again, um, very easy to program. It has a beautiful graphical interface. I'll show you a couple of slides that show that it's beyond just text. We put some graphics in there to make it easy to understand and it has profiles, which makes commissioning much faster. So the first one being profile management, you may ask why is that important? If you're doing the programming of these sensors and you have spaces that are redundant, which chances are there is with large areas, you can save all the different parameters of timing and illumination as a profile and push it to each new zone to make the commissioning a lot faster. These are the major areas within the remote. We try to keep it as simple as possible. The dimming capabilities, occupancy detection, meaning is the sensor seeing somebody underneath it so that it knows the area is occupied and should be an illumination appropriate to where uh, to what's going on under the fixture. Ambient light detection, utilizing the natural light coming in from a skylight or from a garage door so that you're getting even more savings by utilizing the natural light versus the electricity in the fixture and then the power on capabilities. Within each of these, and this looks like a lot, 
we do break it down as simple as possible to set whatever percentage illumination you want, um, the sensitivity of the sensor, the different thresholds for when it sees daylight, how bright do you want that fixture to be and how aggressively do you want it to ramp up and down. And then there's one thing I didn't touch on, which is iBeacon fu functionality. So the Bluetooth part of it in conjunction has iBeaconing uh, certification. So on their, our highest tier, that network tier, you can utilize the sensor as a data point on the ceiling. Think of it like your cell phone and you use GPS and you want to know where you are. It's pinging those satellites around our earth. The sensors in these fixtures can util be utilized the same way for asset tracking as data points on the ceiling to say location on the floor. And because of our open software side, we can partner with third party uh, companies like Pointer or Zebra, utilize their equipment and they can use the, our sensors to find out where that um, piece of equipment, let's say a forklift is on the floor. I'm not going into that in great detail on this power presentation, but I wanted to make you aware. So what do we get with all of these controls? We get capability of controlling the illumination. We're not just on off and getting that LED savings. We're controlling it based on whether somebody's in that space and whether the light illumination makes sense for what's going on. So we really break that down into three different tiers. Occupied, meaning somebody's standing underneath the fixture, they're working in that area, they may want 100% illumination for what they're doing. The rest of the zone doesn't need to be at that a level of illumination. So that because of having integrated sensors in the fixture, you could have that one fixture be at 100% where the person's working, but you could have the rest of the distributed zone, the mesh zone, at an idle output of say only 50% because you want the area illuminated, but you don't need it at full bore for the rest of the zone. So right there, you're, you're getting a savings. And then as you leave the zone, you could have the vacancy go down to completely off if you prefer, or if the customer wants a base level of illumination, you could set vacancy maybe to 10%. With all of these, there is timing involved. So as you walk in, um, after a certain amount of time, you could go up to this level. As you walk out, it would go down to idle. And as, 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 as the idle time runs out, it would go down to vacant. And you could adjust all of those timings based on customer desire. This is a, a little bit of a noisy graph, but it gives you an idea of how that might play out. So you may have an 100% illumination value that you derate down to say 80% for growth in the future. Under um, an occupied scenario, you're at that new, newly defined 100%. And as you walk out of the area, it goes down to idle. Somebody comes back in, goes up to occupied, and you have all the timing associated idle, and then nobody's there, it goes down to vacant. Somebody comes back in, goes up to that occupied. So just another way of looking at it. Along with that, we have built in uh, photo sensing and a custom algorithm des designed by us, um, because maybe you've had some experience with daylight harvesting in the past where, how does it take into the other lights around it? How does it take into daylight? How is it figuring out um, all of those things? And we worked really hard at that to develop something that is very intelligent for knowing what's coming out of the fixture itself, knowing the what's coming out of the fixtures around it, and also knowing what's coming in from the natural light, be it a skylight, garage door, et cetera, or windows. Um, so you don't have to worry about that part. Um, what you can assign, knowing that it's taking care of that, are different thresholds. So you could say, I want um, uh, ambient threshold at uh, a certain illumination level, and I want the fixture to be at a certain brightness level based on that. So you can set your low and high ambient thresholds to ramp up and ramp down between these two points. So a high ambient threshold, meaning there's a lot of sunlight. The fixture right here is at the lowest level of illumination. When the sunlight ramps back down, now you're utilizing your fixture illumination. This is kind of what it looks like. So you guys, fixtures on the ceiling with a sensor, the ambient light coming in, we have, um, reflective light off the floor and other fixtures around it. So it's taking all of those things into account when it ramps up and ramps down. So you don't have the nuisance bouncing of it's bright, it's dark. Um, it's correctly adjusting itself to get energy savings um, in, a, in, a, in a visual that you would expect from the fixture. We put those two things together. This is what it looks like. So previously we talked about our illumination levels. You got vacant and idle and occupied. You pair that along with the uh, daylight harvesting, and this is kind of what it looks like. You can bounce between these three levels and it'll ramp up, ramp down based on the natural daylight. 
Now, another thing I'll just point out here is that if you turn daylight on, it's already in the fixture. So you don't have to zone for daylight with this fixture. You can turn it on on those sensors. And if it sees the daylight, it will automatically um, move within the thresholds that are programmed into it. This is an example of how we make it easier to edit those settings. So you may have seen a lot of text-based settings, but if you go into this occupied output, you'll see a graphical representation of what we were just talking about right on the remote on the high resolution screen. So you know what it's doing in a more than just a 80% value on a bar graph. And then because of the bi-directional infrared, you can do a querying of the fixture. So maybe one of the fixtures didn't quite get the programming um, when somebody went through with the remote program them, you can pull data out of the fixture beyond just pushing data and you can see what's going on with the fixture. Did it get the right settings? Did it get the right profile? Is it throwing an error for some reason because one of the settings is incorrect or whatever? We try to make it as intuitive as possible and feed information back um, with this tool so that you can tell quickly what's going on and rectify it. In addition, it if you have multiple fixtures, you might have a list of fixtures that you see above you and uh, that the remote could talk to. It'll give you a list of those and you can go into it, click identify, and it'll visibly flash the fixture to say, yep, that's the one I wanted. That's the one I'm talking to. Let's move forward. <clears throat> so coming back to the upgrade list, we've kind of walked through how the sensor works, the technology built in. We looked at the remote. I wanted to touch on Easy Connect because Easy Connect has another tool, which is an app. And I'm going to quickly walk you through. It's really just 10 steps within the app. Again, trying to make it as easy as possible um, to get, say, independent fixtures zoned as a distributed mesh network. And this is how it looks once it's commissioned up. So when you use the app, uh, you have multiple fixtures. They can communicate through a nonlinear path to each other as nodes, as this mesh network. You can tie in a switch. And our switch for the Easy Connect system is batteryless. It's kinetically energy powered. So you physically moving it with your finger is powering that switch. So you don't have to worry about walking around the building on a maintenance um, schedule to check if the batteries are all still good. It will continue to work without batteries because it's self-powered. That switch in particular has different ways of mounting, whether it's surface mount, flush mount, it's single gain, um, very easy, typical rocker type switch that you're used to. The switch can be pushed up for on, down for off, and then you can hold it if you want to dim up or dim down. So now I'm going to show you the, the real 10 step quick process of doing Easy Connect. So say you had some Daintree One fixtures, you want to commission them into a zone. You launch the app, which is easily downloadable from the iOS App Store, like any other application. It's free to download. There's no fee for the app. You set up a login. Um, pay attention to the login that you do create. I would create it for the site because of Zigbee and its security. This login is hard tied into the sensor, um, but we do allow you to share the login with whoever you want after it's created, but I would create it based on the site that it's being utilized for. Once you get the login set up, you are asked to create a room or a zone and you can click create room. You'll name the room appropriately to wherever you're commissioning that. And you can select channel 15 as default, not over 90% of the time. This is really just something that's there in case you have a lot of RF interference in the area for some reason. That's extremely rare, but we give the option um, for that if that becomes the case. So after the room name is created, you'll click add nodes and you'll begin scanning. Now the app is being driven by Bluetooth. So these fixtures can be commissioned into a zone based on your location and the, the signal strength of the fixture next to you. So you can start in a corner of a room, it'll start um, pinging the fixtures that are next to you. It'll visibly flash it so you can say, oh yeah, that's the fixture I wanna add to the zone. You click yes, and it'll continue to scan, look for another fixture, and you'll keep going through that until it'll find all of the nodes that you want for that zone. You'll be presented with this list of um, different fixtures at the tail end, and then you say, okay, it'll commission those fixtures together so they know, okay, we're all part of a group now as a zone and you're done. At this point, this is, this is it. This is the dashboard and it has a lot of the same things that we talked about with the remote earlier, where you can set your times for uh, occupied, unoccupied, vacant, sensitivity settings, daylight harvesting, 
all of those same things are right on this simple dashboard here. You can change any of it and it will send it up to the zone that you're standing next to. If you want to go back and you want to see the nodes that you put in the room, you can click on the tab on the bottom here. You can see the switches that are added to the room and then you can see the user account. That's it. We truly try to make this thing easy. So beyond that, I'll touch on network for a little bit. Um, we've got a lot of information here, so I'm not going to um, go into too much detail on network for you. But if you want to go up beyond controlling illumination, setting zones, and you want to really tie this system into the other aspects of a building, networked is really where that comes in, um, in addition to tying it to the cloud. So you can remotely log into it. Um, say you're a maintenance person, you want to see where something's going awry in the facility um, in one building or even buildings across the globe. This system really lets you do that. It's very well vetted. We got over 300 million square feet under some very large names in the industry that are running 24 seven right now. Um, and as I said, it's something that can be scaled completely from a room all the way up to multi-campus across the world. The um, advantages of this is allows you to plug into things like the BMS or BACnet system, uh, plug low controls, schedules, all of those things that are beyond just doing zoning and illumination control. This is an idea of what it, this looks like. So say the WHS 20 and the ABV3 fixture we're talking about as part of the system, there's still a mesh network in between, but all of this is connecting to what we call a WAC or wireless area controller and then out to the cloud. And it's all controlled with a web interface connected to a web server or cloud server. So you can have a dashboard, you can have metrics showing you what's going on with your system. Um, you can commission things remotely. It's, it's a really powerful system. This is another closer look at that dashboard um, and how you might see things. This yellow area is a heat map. So you can look at with those occupancy sensors and all that great data you have coming into the system. You can see areas that are more heavily occupied like these red um, zones that you see here. And customers can get an idea of, oh, there's a lot more um, personnel in a particular area of the floor. Maybe we should redesign a cell or a zone or some aisles to make more sense for how our space is truly being utilized. Or you could have a loading of a building layout and you could have color coding in that fashion to see um, maybe in the commercial space, an office or something like that. I know we're talking about high bay, but this entails everything. Um, you can draw those metrics with this system. So stepping back, looking at how is all this stuff tied together, we talked it in the beginning, we got Daintree 1, single fixture, easy connect, commission zone, networked, commission zone, but uh, tied to the cloud. The catalog logic works out with the WHS 20 sensor as F options, D options for easy connect coming in December, end of December here, and then networked as N options. You can commission uh, these areas um, standalone, if you like it out of the box, you don't have to do anything. It's really just plug and play. But if you do want to change things around, you can with the remote. And e Easy Connect, you can zone things with the app or you can change some simple settings with the remote. And then networked is web driven, connected to a WAC out to the cloud. Um, but there are some commissioning tool assistant apps that are coming for ease of documenting all of the QR codes and serial numbers with the fixtures. So the last thing I want to really say here is that there are a lot, there's a lot of infrastructure that we put around this. It's not just go sell this fixture and you're on your own. We are continuing to develop it. We're continuing to be there for you um, from a service and support and tools perspective. So we do have a design team um, that can assist with uh, completing layouts and doing quotes uh, after you get it to the point of designating where you want things. We have some Jolt software that's um, just being released specifically tailored to our system as far as the icons and the layout. If you're familiar with Bluebeam, it looks very similar to that, but it's fully web driven, very modern and allows you to build a bomb and do the layout. You can simply load your floor plan and put the equipment on there. So this is um, an extremely valuable thing that will continue to be developed over this next year. And all of that can be tied into one single easy to know bomb with controls and lighting for quoting and um, acquiring a PO. On the back end, we have 24 seven support with our team. So a lot, of, um, a lot of components are here to allow you to go out and win business. So this is my last slide. I just thought I'd put it on here again to remind you of the upgradability, the flexibility of the system. 
And with this, I will open it up to questions. Thank you so much. We do have a question, a couple of questions that have come in. Uh, make sure that if you have any, just type them into the either the Q&A or the chat. We'll make sure they all get answered. First question we've got for you. Are the office troffers, strip fixtures, and exterior able to be programmed with the Easy Connect as well? The office fixtures can definitely be programmed with Easy Connect. We do not have Easy Connect in the outdoor space at this time. On the network side of this wireless portfolio, we do have an outdoor node for, say, parking lot uh, fixtures. And that's one of the strengths I didn't touch on about this platform is you could tie the office, the industrial, and the outdoor space into one complete dashboard, one single pane of glass. But not for Easy Connect. Thanks. Another question Is the app available on Android? It is not. Um, it, it, everybody asked that question, so thank you. <laughs> um, uh, as everybody has resource constrictions, a uh, focus has been on the iOS app. The, uh, the design team is very aware of the need for an Android app. Um, I would not say that's going to be in the near future here. Maybe if I'd put a number down, maybe in the next two years, I'd say. So I wouldn't hold your breath for it right away. But they are certainly aware of it. And um, we always get that question. Great. Great, everybody is able to unmute um, all participants. So if you have any questions for Damien, now is your chance to ask them. Hey Damien, we have a question about stock. Are these um, products that we reviewed today stocked in Crescent Branches? I don't know if Dwayne can uh, pipe in on that one. I'll let him answer that. Can I answer that? This is Hutch. Oh, go ahead, Hutch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because the uh, the fixture comes with that sensor, um, and it's typically a project driven piece. Um, we're not we're not encouraging any stocking at this time because of the different lumen outputs. So we could put in a twenty four thousand lumen uh, ABV and then have that smart sensor on it, but. When we go to look at the project, then the, uh, the contractor is going to say, well, I need more than 24,000. So um, I think, and I, I don't like to talk against stocking, but um, I do talk that this is a product that you guys can have exclusivity on, but you don't have to stock it. And I think that's um, a big plus for your district managers and your ops people and the people that are trying to keep your, your inventory turns uh, active. And, and meet those criteria. So, um, uh, you know, Carson, who I think she's on here, she and I have worked on a couple of projects with this and we, we just find that, you know, in a large facility where this is gonna make its big play, there's lower ceilings, there's higher ceilings, there's ceilings that we can't even see, right? So for us just to have Crescent pull in even two SKUs, we may not have the right ones. And so then they're sitting on inventory that that they really aren't going to make any money on for a long time. So I, I think that's a pretty appropriate answer. Dwayne can jump in and uh, either shoot that down or support me. Dwayne. yoo -hoo. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, th does that, does that make sense? Sure does. That's me. Okay. How about you, Abby? Yes, it does. Great. Any other questions? I don't see anything else coming in. I put everybody to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just going to go ahead and close it up. Thank you so much, Dwayne and Damian and Greg, for your time today. And thank you for sponsoring our Textbird webinar series. Thank you for those that attended today for spending your precious time with us. Make sure you check out our series on Facebook and LinkedIn. You're going to be finding some um, really great shareable content, videos, blogs, and um, other posts about GE Current and um, other suppliers that are going to be featured in the Textbird webinar series. So take a look and, uh, oh, do we have another? Nope, thank you very much, Marty. Hey, Marie. Yes. I had a couple of the uh, uh, 
Crescent sellers that said they they weren't able to jump on because they had other commitments. Okay. And they said they said they would watch it later. Do, do does everybody on your team know how to go to the these videos and and pull them up? Yes. So after today's session, um, I will send a recording out to all that registered um, and to all customers that we um, have invited so that they can take a listen on their own time or come okay. back and watch this again. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Super. Great. So yep, take a look at on our social media channels, Facebook and LinkedIn primarily, and you'll be seeing some really great um, shareable content about this and other topics. So thank you very much, everyone. Have Thanks, everybody, for your time. Thanks. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.